So today, I mean, you know, obviously Fear City was a, was a hit documentary. Uh, you were featured in it. It was a great documentary. If people haven't watched it, please go check it out right now. Um, we made a video earlier kind of going a little bit into it. Uh, but I think, you know, we're going to try to attack different aspects of it um, to see, you know, your thoughts on if it was accurately portrayed, maybe show some more insight from that time period. Today, I'm personally very curious to, to hear about the labor unions. Um, you know, they talk about it in Fear City. I didn't realize how much the mafia was involved in that. Um, I'll kind of let you take it away and talk about the relationship between the mafia, the labor unions, how that really worked. And also, you know, if you feel like the documentary did a good job of portraying it, if they were missing some things, how you feel about that? Well, Gene, you could talk about the Colombo family a little bit and right. your knowledge in, in the recent days, and then I'll kick it back to... In, in, uh, in my generation, in um, early 2000s, up until the Colombo family really collapsed in 2010, um, they ran 6A Labor's Union. I mean, they literally ran ran it. Like, you could not... not to get, cut you off, what is 6A for the people that don't know? It's a concrete union. Okay. So, um, basically, I mean, I have a lot of friends of mine that were kicked out of that union. Uh, Bruce Mile actually kicked them out. <laughs> um, a, a lot of... Um, it's basically... Ralphie Scopo was the guy who ran that union. He actually passed away. His father, I believe, was part of the commission case. Um, his brother was also uh, killed. Um they ran they ran the whole union if you want to go into that union basically you got to go through them they were selling union books basically 2500 a pop i mean if you were around them they put you on no show jobs um you it, they basically they basically legitimately ran the whole thing it was you had to go through them and that's that's amazing how you could say that an organization could actually run city jobs and permit and all this stuff you'd have to go through the mob to do anything and um of course Ralphie scopo was behind the scenes well you just dumb it down for like the, just make it even even more simple for people who have no idea what you're talking about exactly like step one step two step three on how it works. all right for instance i'll give you a scenario so they have a thing called the coffee boy so a coffee boy on the union site is basically put there by a mob guy so rafi scopo put his coffee boys on the site now when you're on the site you can't leave to go get lunch and breakfast you have to buy the stuff there so they'll have coffee boys that are there that'll basically go to stores and buy cheaper foods and cheaper things at a half a price and charge you three dollars for a sandwich three dollars for a gatorade and now they're making rackets off food and drinks and everything okay. that's a big racket in the union now basically now they got to get their cut up top and the coffee boy will make his cut now you're talking thousands and thousands of dollars a day just off that hmm. now you have to pay someone to get on the job now if you want to get on the job uh, i want a full book okay give me 2500 give me a pc a check i'll get you a, a thousand a week um full book and that's how that's how to operate, you know. Mm. For so you go back to Fear City, and one of the guys that get gets arrested in that commission case is uh, Ralphie Scopo, who ran what he's talking about the Union Six A, and Six A is just what he was saying. Every job that goes up, every labor that has to be done on that job, every brick, every piece of dirt, everything that moves is through the labor union. So I would get, you know, all my guys' labor books. And it would be through our friends that were working, there were delegates, and they'd hand them a book either as a friend, they'd hand it to them, or you'd pay for it. And uh, the city, every job that's run through the city has got to be run through the labor's union. And that's why Ralphie got uh, locked up on that case. Now, Ralphie's uh, brother and son were also involved. For the people that don't know, Joey Scopo became one of the bosses of uh, the faction of the Colombo family during the wars. He was partners with Jeannie Gotti, John Gotti Sr.'s brother. They were partners in a in a, a book, a loan shark book. So they would loan money out all through the city, half a million, million dollars, whatever they had out there. I think it was about a half a million at the time when he gets killed. And uh, Joey happens to be a nice guy, really nice guy. His son's out there today. Son's not a tough guy. They straightened him out. He knows more stories about the kid because oh, he's younger. And uh, but, the, but the father was a, a, a nice guy, really nice guy, gentleman. I liked him a lot. Uh, he, he's, he was around with us all the time, hung out with us. He was at my uh, uh, bachelor party for when I first got married uh, the first time as a, well, the only time. It didn't last too long, but uh, he was one of the guys, a uh, generous guy, gave me a good envelope, to be honest with you. <laughs> and uh, later on, you know, mob words treacherous, and you know, our friend later on, who was a skipper with the Colombo family, was in on the hit that killed Joey. Unfortunately, this is part of what we always talk about. So when the movie uh, Fear City shows how the city is controlled by our friends and, and the mob, 
And legitimately, every building, every stone that gets unturned is controlled and could be shut down by us. So without the laborers, without the Teamsters, you got no movement. And mm -hmm. that was the power behind the structure of uh, the movie Fear City, the power and the structure with, with Manhattan and how every job is run through the city. And also, you know, obviously Philadelphia and North Jersey and the labor unions and some of these unions like Riggy was running big in construction business. I brought up Sean Richards earlier, his son-in-law who ran a lot of these jobs. And, you know, we had the control of, of every building that was going up one way or another. So when they came out with Fear City and, and they're showing the, uh, the public, they really, I think they were amazed at the movie and that's why it's doing so well. I mean, obviously I talked about Parsons, the, he's the editor, I forgot his name the last time we were talking. And he did Once Upon a Time in London also. The guy does great work. Uh, I got a lot of respect for the way he uh, edited this movie. One of the editors, there's several, but that's the one I know. And uh, it, it's just uh, unbelievable when people listen to, you know, they don't have knowledge that we have. We just assume everybody knows what we know and mm -hmm. sometimes you don't explain it to the, to the extent that they want to know about it. But along with you know running these unions, obviously these guys getting hurt on a regular basis that oh, yeah. don't fall in line, guys are getting killed. And that's part of the structure behind the scenes, like he said. It's a racket. You're talking a multi-million dollar racket. You know, even John Senior back in the day, I mean, Gravano, I'm pretty sure they, positive, they had their hands in everything. You know, well, they were killing people to take their stuff from them, right? And that. Oh yeah, and I, one of my friends, you know, back in the day, uh, Frankie Fabiano used to run the unions, and one of my friends, dear friends of mine from Philadelphia, was the head of the, those unions, and so you know, these are friends, mutual Spinella. friends. So you, yeah, you Spinella. got guys like that. Uh, if you want a job, or if, uh, you know, some of my friends' kids want want a job, we put you right in. I mean, those days are over from when you can just hand jobs out, no show jobs, and I'd get my guys' jobs all over and. The same, they would get other people jobs, and you know, you, half these guys aren't showing; they're running around with me, but they're taking a paycheck every week, mm -hmm. and you know, that's what ups the cost on some of these jobs. And families are all getting kickbacks, and so you know, it's a it's a well-oiled machine, obviously. And the movie shows that, and it shows just what we said: not only are they controlling the buildings and the unions, but now you're controlling the streets, which is controlling the banks, which is controlling the infrastructure of New York City itself. And you got guys going in with no-show jobs. They're getting full full book and overtime added in, and they're not even there. They go sign in and leave. And was that the same? Was that the same during during your generation as well? I mean, yeah. How, how that was going on until the Colombo family? They collapsed in 2010. That's when they they don't need, they they got wiped out. But before that, they were powerful and they were running that union, and that's how they had a lot of their guys no-show jobs. They would go there, sign up, you know, go in for the day and leave at. 10 minutes later and get a full full paycheck. Wow. And then they had their coffee boy set up. They were making a fortune out of that place. Well, you know, something he said also with the trucks. You know, you, you ever see these trucks that are out parked all over the street? Right. Joe Messina, the boss of the Bonanno family, that's how he got rich. He had trucks all over the city and they would be on those job sites. So if you got a truck and you got a license and you're Arab or whatever you are, right. you're not going on. I mean, these days you can get on in front of these sites. But back in the day, you're not getting on these sites. So we're controlling these sites. Those are his trucks. They're, They're in front of every you. job site. You know what I mean? And, you know, so when those coffee boys are going somewhere else, now it's Joe's truck on that site. They're right. going to Joe. They're not even going out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you got to remember these coffee boys and these guys are getting, you know, full salary late. You know, they're getting benefits, like he said. And, you, you know, maybe a guy works for me and he's out and he's baseball batting somebody. He's not going to work. That's, that's, his, that's how we're paying him. You know, right. So he hangs around with me all day. He shows up for the job. He checks in in the morning. And, you know, he might go back at the end of the day, depending on if somebody's watching a job, who we have there. And, you know, if we have somebody close to us on that job, then we, he never shows up. He takes his pay every right. week. Sometimes they kick it to their guy, a piece of it, and, you know, and, and we just put every, each guy in, a, in, in each job. Did you feel like uh, the documentary, did it leave out any details or anything about, um, you know, the unions and construction and, and that kind of, when they when they touched on those subjects? Well, they didn't get into all the shootings. Well, I was going to say that. The violence wasn't, because there's yeah. a lot of people getting killed over those unions. Really? Well, we Constantly. Had, we How had so? Anthony Arrelata, yeah. who, who hit a union boss. They don't kill him. They try to kill him. You had O'Connor that got hit. Actually, the, the grandson stays in touch with me still. He was caught in his union with God. He was talking about it was a famous tape senior was talking about put a rocket in his pocket and they they hit him outside of uh bankers and brokers uh downtown so you know a lot of these shootings that people don't really see what kept this structure 
is what I always talk about, uh, and you hear me say it a lot on a lot of different interviews, is the foundation. A lot of the mob world has lost its foundation and structure. It's hard to have structure when you're having these bosses like Joe Messina wearing wires or you know, guys like Al Diarco or Ralph Natale, any of these bosses from every city ratting. And, and it's also had hard to have structure when you don't have the violence. And you're not going to have the violence with all the cameras and technology today and the, uh, and the recall law that actually Fear City is about. And right. that's what we're talking about. When you control unions like this, the recall law comes along and it's furthering an enterprise and you're going to see 100 guys get locked up. So it's just not capable of doing what you used to do in the day. So do you do you think that the the mafia, I mean, always had a strong foundation, or do you do you feel like it was almost bound to get ruined at some point? Well, when they started becoming like celebrities, that's what ruined it. Uh, that's it. Limelight ruined it. Everyone will tell you that. Like my uncle Andy, he didn't want no attention. He didn't want no one to know who he was. You had guys like Guy Senior, which I'm not gonna knock Senior because he was a gangster, but. The thing with him is that he was too flashy. You're on Time Magazine, you're a boss. Come on, man. That's like old timers look at it like, get this fucking guy out of here. You know what I mean? That's ridiculous. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. That is, that, 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 that that's what killed it, you know? Mm. The flamboyance, all the $10,000 suits, the craziness. That's what killed the mafia. So do you think it would still be around if it weren't for that kind of flashiness? And oh, 100%. 100%. If, if the notoriety and people aren't greedy, and then when you have, you know, murders like uh, Jimmy Hoffa, Right when he gets killed and the body's never found, and the notoriety behind it and the media behind it, this is what kills the ability to run the unions the way we used to run them. And uh, again, Fear City was uh, something that came out and really opened the eyes, I think, of the way it was laid out for the public to, to really understand a little bit more of and the intricacies of uh, the mob. And also I want to you know, explain why the FBI not that they hate us so much, but think about it. If um, an FBI agent who works and makes maybe makes 80000 a year, let's just say, and they like what they do, and they got to drive past my old boss's house, who has no job, no education, no nothing, hurting people, criminal, and living in a $3 million mansion on the corner, you think they want to see this guy in that house? You think they want to see us living good and having this stuff, and we didn't have to earn it, we took it? So that also puts a bullseye on you. These guys, are, they look at us like bullies. They're imposing their will. They're forcing union guys. They're killing people, hurting people. They're not gonna allow this. They they have to. They had to eliminate us. Basically, we're taking over the country. Mm. That's really what was happening. But even you think, even if there wasn't that flamboyance and that high level spending, even with technology as it is today, do you think it could still work? Mm. Say everybody kept a low profile, but there's the technology that you had today. You think it could still work? Uh, my opinion. Yeah. I don't think anything will work without violence because the fear of violence, and the name again, right. Fear City, yeah. right. is the fear of violence. That's why are you gonna fear pay? City. Why am I gonna pay you? If there's no violence, why am I paying you? What am I scared of? I'm gonna punch you out. No, what am I scared of? Why am I giving you $100,000? Why am I paying you every month? And it's not, it's not the associate or the maid guy mm. that you have to worry about anymore. It's the associate and the maid guy that has to worry about their captain and boss because the captain and boss is like the Bonanno family, we're all cooperating. Oh my God. Or like the Gambino family, they're all cooperating. Or like the Lucchese family, the, I'm talking about the bosses now, I'm not talking about associates. They were all cooperating. Or you talk about the Colombo family that got completely dismantled. Mm -hmm. Or you talk about the Philadelphia mob, they all completely cooperated. Or we go into the Irish gang with Whitey Bulger, he was cooperating, mm -hmm. right? And then we go to Chicago with Chucky e. Porter and he was cooperating. Then we go to Chicago Outfit, and they were cooperating. Right? So where, where's there left for a guy that's on the street that's an associate? He's got to sit back and say, this guy's going to ask me to do, hurt somebody now in these day and age with this RICO law like Fear City. And my boss, five years, two years, next year, 10 years, is an informant. He's a rat. He's wearing a wire. So it's not like before back in Tony Salerno's day what we're talking about. You know, we're not talking about the chin. We're not talking about any of these guys. We're talking about you didn't have to worry about those bosses because there wasn't, obviously, Tony Solano got life and Paul Castellano got killed and this is all in Fear City. But prior to that case, 
And that's why it was so important. You know, people are constantly telling you, writing, oh, this wasn't Giuliani. No one's saying it was Giuliani. They didn't actually write the document up. Whoever oh wrote God. that and it's keeps like, commenting about that. It's so ridiculous. It's, right? it's Giuliani's. He came with he, the idea. He, he's the one that brought it in. Right. And, you know, so when they're writing this nonsense, no, you know, no shit. We know it ain't him who wrote the, the actual right. law. The actually, Constitution is saying, yeah. all right, we get it. We know. He didn't write the Constitution, but he brought up the he idea how to get it. them. Right. Yeah. So when you have these guys that are coming in, and it's not the old timers, it's not Albert Anastasia, it's not his uncle, Fat Andy Ruggiano, who aren't wearing wise, who aren't rat, and was prior to the Rico world. Well, Andy does get jammed up later on in Rico. But uh, other these guys, when you're an underlink and you're an associate or a made guy, you don't mind doing work if that's your personality, if you're the type of guy that's a hitter. You know, if you're violent, if you're me. But when you're me and you're sitting in a penitentiary like I was in Brazil, and the whole Bonanno family went in, and Gotti Jr. went in, and all his his soldiers went in. I mean, one after another, not one or two. They all went in, and you're sitting in the penitentiary like a jackass, and you're saying to yourself, what the fuck am I doing here? Every boss, everybody's right. And they're all meeting the government. They're switching the rules. They're queen of the day. And they're all seeing this now. And this is why I'm talking to kids. Like, you, you guys could forget whatever happened in our eras in the early, mid-70s, 80s, 90s. Those days are well over. So you can't have any kind of structure anymore like this. It's over. Right. I wanted to also explain, like, think about the message that it sends. Like a guy like Joe Messina, right? He's the boss of bosses. He's uh, You weren't allowed to say his name. You had to touch your ear. This guy was supposed to be the most, you know, notorious fear. You know, we're coming up like, oh, Joe Messina, God, you know, everything. Think about the message that that sends that he's going to go bad. What kind of message does that send to guys like us that are coming up and captains like, this is the guy we look up, look up to. He's wearing a wire. He's getting a deal. He's breaking the ultimate code that he made the rules for, basically. He's trying to change his family. He's trying to change the Bonanno family to his name, his last name. And this guy cooperates. It sends a message. The FBI only let him cooperate, I believe, to basically show, like, it's dead. Mm. The mob is dead. You know, to give a guy a deal like that, it's like... Well, those are the names that people know. So when you right. say the last Don Joe Messina, but they don't talk about Sal Vitale, his brother, who also cooperated. Or Frankie Copa, who was very rich skipper that, you know, Frankie this guy's, in, you know, he's a big money guy. And Frankie Lino, Killer. You, know, you know, Frankie Copa couldn't open up a can of soda, but he's loaded with money. And, you know, he's a big informant. So, you know, when you got these guys, what are you telling a young kid? Oh, it's not like that anymore. Or when I, you know, when I talk about Anthony Arrolada and guys like that who are skippers that are involved with hitting another boss, Bruno, or hitting, or trying to hit a, a, a union leader, uh, and these guys are all testifying against him, and they're being made straightened out so people understand what that means. Is uh, being a made man, man in a family and being straightened out, they're going in in their underwear and being made. Yeah. So I told Anthony as a joke because me and Anthony know each other since the 90s. Listen, when they make you, tell the boss that's going to straighten you out. Tell the guys that are skippers that are going to be there. You want them in their underwear too because you don't trust them. Forget about them trusting mm -hmm. you. Gotcha. So how are you going to have an organization when you just don't trust anyone? Well, we had, you know, we had uh, Snow Billy on, and they're talking about their organization. Same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, the people are breaking rules left and right. doesn't have to be just the mafia. Beautiful. Well, we'll be uh, going into more aspects of, of Fear City uh, in the coming weeks. And uh, thank you guys for another uh, good segment. Yep. Thank you.